Okay, so let's do a little bit of review about functions, function notation, and properties that we can get from graphs of functions or about functions. Just some review about those concepts. So let's start with what is a function? I just think of a function as um, a mathematical object that takes in an input and gives you an output. So we think about input then output. Okay, so let's say our function is f. This takes an input value and then it would give you an output that goes with it. And typically we use x for the inputs and y for the outputs. It doesn't have to be that way, but that's typically what we do. We use x as input, y as output. So you can sort of assume that's what's happening unless someone tells you otherwise. Then specifically, not only can we just give an input and then have an output, functions have a property that every input has a unique output. My favorite analogy for this is a vending machine. So when you input the number of the item that you want, you expect that the vending machine will give you that item. Every input into the vending machine should have only one output. Sometimes a vending machine might be broken and might not do this, but the idea is a well-working vending machine is like a function. You type in a number, and it gives you the object or the food item that goes with that number. It's not going to be too important for us here today, but you might just remember that we often use the vertical line test as a way to let us know if something is a function. I'm not gonna go through that here, I'm just hoping to spark your memory if that's something you have seen before. When we talk about functions, we like to use function notation. That's just a way for us to indicate what the input is and what the output is. So you'll often see people write f of x equals y, and the whole point of this is just to let you know that x is the input that goes in to the function f, and y is the output that comes out. So if you ever see something with an f of x value or f of something, that's how we say that by the way, that f with the parentheses and the x, f of something, that just means we're talking about an output value, which you can kind of correspond to as a y value, unless something is different is happening where it's told you otherwise. All right, so let's practice some function notation using this graph I have here. This is just sort of two types of graphs smushed together. You don't really need to worry about it too much. Just know this is what we're looking at. Um, let's call this graph f. And so I'm going to ask you a couple questions about this, and then we will go through how to answer them together. So after I ask each question, you might just want to pause it really quick and try to look for yourself to figure out what it is. Then you can resume the video to see what the answers are. So the first question I'm going to ask you is f of 0 equals, so take a second see if you can figure that out, you can pause if you need to. How I'm going to solve this problem is I will start by looking at the x is 0, that's my input, I have f of 0, so I want to look as x is 0. Then I want to find the y value on our graph that goes with it, so if I look up I see that it is at 0, 3, so 3 is the y value that goes with x is 0. So f of 0 equals 3. I'm going to ask you another one. So let's say f of negative 4 equals. Again, you could take a second to figure it out for yourself. But we're following the same process. Negative 4 is my x. So I look at negative 4 and the x. And I just want to find what y goes with it. I look up and I see that it is 1 as the y. So there's a point at negative 4, 1. So 1 is my answer that goes with negative 4 as the input. Okay, let's change it up a little bit. Let's say I want to know for what x value is f of x equal to negative 1. So again, you can pause, take a second to try to figure this out for yourself. When I am solving this, I am thinking that I'm trying to find the x, the input, that goes with f of x is negative 1. So you want to be thinking of that negative 1 as an output. So I'm going to find negative 1 out of my y, the output, and I want to see which x value goes with it. So if I look on the graph, I see there's a point at 4, negative 1. So 4 as an x goes with negative 1 y. So x equals 4 would be my answer here. That's the x value. The x value of 4 goes with the y value negative 1. Just one more thing I want to highlight here. So when we have these statements like f of 0 equals 3 and f of negative 4 equals 1, we can write these as coordinate points or as ordered pairs. So we can think of these as an x, y pair. So this first statement is really 0, 3. 
0 is the x, 3 is the y, and the second statement, negative 4, is the x, 1 is the y. And really we could do the same thing for this last question I asked you, so 4 is the x, negative 1 is the y. Okay, so we've done a little bit of function notation. I just want to talk about a few other properties that we often point out on graphs of functions. So the first thing I want to talk about is increasing and decreasing. So increasing and decreasing with a graph mean what you probably would think of. So we move through the graph from the left side to the right side. So I think of increasing as going uphill and decreasing as going downhill. If we were like um, little hikers walking along the graph, we would talk about if we were going increasing or decreasing or uphill or downhill. So if we look at this example above, we can think that we are decreasing for the first portion of the graph since we would be going down as we walk from left to right. Then when we would get to this point at x is negative 3, something would change. So we'd be at this little valley and we would start going uphill. Then when we get to 0 on the x at this peak, something would change again and we would start going down. And we would go down and down and down until we were about to fall off the graph at the end. So in more mathematical words, for the first portion of the graph, we are decreasing. For the middle portion of the graph, we are increasing. Then for the final whole portion of the graph, we are decreasing again. Sometimes textbooks write really mathematical explanations of what increasing and decreasing is with lots of symbols, but I don't think you need to make it that complicated if you don't want to or if it doesn't serve you any purpose. But in this class, the other thing we might want to think of, at least at this point, it will get more complicated later, but we want to just think about increasing as going uphill, having a positive slope. And then for decreasing, we have a negative slope. I just want to highlight that answers to questions about increasing and decreasing, they always have x values as answers. So it seems like maybe we would use y values. We'd look at how high we are or how low we get, but really we want to think about these intervals I've drawn here where we're starting at the left side of the graph. So for us it's like negative 8, but you can imagine it goes all the way to negative infinity. We are walking from left to right. We do decreasing, increasing, decreasing again, and we do it until we get off the edge of the page. So we would be over at infinity. Let's clear this off really quickly and just formulate these questions as you might see them on a homework assignment. So I would say for which values of x is f increasing? So I look for increasing that's going uphill. I am seeing the middle portion of the graph. Um, so from negative 3 over to 0. That is the portion of the graph where we are going uphill or increasing. And so my answer would be from negative 3 on the x to 0 on the x. And we tend to use parentheses so that we don't include those endpoints. That's just because if we look at the lowest point and the highest point here, we are not really going up or down at those points. We are just like standing in the valley or standing on the top of the hill. We're not increasing anymore. So we don't include those endpoints usually. I could ask you a similar question for decreasing. So for which values of x is f decreasing? So here I am seeing that we start the function off by decreasing and then we end the function by decreasing. So we have two intervals here. We're going to have the beginning part and the end part. So remember these go off to negative infinity and positive infinity even though the graph only shows us one little piece. So for which values is the function decreasing? We have from negative infinity until we get to negative 3, and that is going to get unioned, that's that big U, with the interval from 0 to infinity, that second portion there. So even if the question doesn't tell you for which values of x, you should just assume increasing and decreasing always wants x values. Want to know which inputs have that property. So with increasing and decreasing, we also have the concepts of local maximums and minimums. You might see other teachers call these maximums and minimums extrema. So we're using the word local here. You should just think local means we're looking in small little sections of the graph rather than talking about overall what is the maximum or minimum. Especially with this example we have here, there isn't an absolute maximum or a global maximum since the function keeps going on and on forever off to infinity. And there isn't a global minimum since the function also keeps going down forever to negative infinity. So when we look at this example, we can see that we have a local maximum 
where the function changes from increasing to decreasing. It's this point right here at 0, 3. So if we zoom in on just that portion of the graph, we are seeing that 0, 3 looks like a peak or a maximum or the top of a hill in our function. So maximums are where the function changes from increasing to decreasing. So for us, that would be the point 0, 3. And minimums are going to be the other case. So we have one at negative 3, 0, where the function is changing from decreasing to increasing. So at that little valley where we're going downhill then uphill, the minimums will be where the function changes from decreasing to increasing. So here that point is negative 3, 0. Okay, so the last bit I have to tell you about is intercepts. So we have horizontal and vertical intercepts. So again, you can think of horizontal as the x and vertical as the y, um, but I like to just call them horizontal and vertical intercepts just so we know this applies to any type of input or output, whatever variable the problem is using. So the word intercept just means where it touches or crosses or hits. You might hear any of those words. So let's go through each of these and figure out what they are for this example. So for the horizontal intercepts, we want to look at the horizontal axis and we want to look at where the function touches or crosses. So I see that at negative 3, we have a intercept, a horizontal intercept, because it is touching the x-axis there, the horizontal axis. And then again at 3.5, let's say 3.5, we have a, another horizontal intercept where the function is crossing through the x-axis. So my horizontal intercepts would be negative 3, 0, and 3.5, 0. So I'm writing those as points. Sometimes you can just get away with writing them as like x equals or just a number, but my go-to is just to write them as an ordered pair as a point. Okay, next let's do the vertical intercepts. So vertical, we want to look at the y-axis, the vertical axis, and see where it crosses. Typically there's only one of these if it's a function, since it should pass the vertical line test. So I see at 0, 3, or at 3 on the y, we cross through the y-axis, so my vertical intercept is 0, 3. 